Hi, Jonathan. Like I've always said, lip reading is something which will be a little difficult. Yes, now you're okay. You're not in favor of lip reading. No, it didn't work out for me. <laughs> <laughs> Best not to do it. Okay. But uh, now this, but it's not correct on your part to give us only such little time. I don't know. Is that a moment can be an eternity? <laughs> Look, the thing is that we need to go through your story. So we need to uh, take time. I'm okay. I'm okay with the fact that we can take time. We can do it again. That's not a problem. We can have as many parts of this series, of, of, of your series as much as we want. But how are you? I'm well. And how are you? Good, good. Except that golf is not happening because the weather is not so good and there was lockdown so i was sitting at home so now getting back there's an inertia of rest because the weather is not the best so mm. that's how it is <laughs> i got to is home in, in delhi yeah yeah so Kato, you know jonathan you know Kato. Yes. yes we've we've met before Yes, that's so going. I, I'm surprised that given the choice of the Olympics or Lux, that you chose Lux. Uh, if I were you, I would have chosen the Olympics. Okay, I think you'll, you'll like to say that, Jonathan, but the fact is he's come for me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's Olympics or me. <laughs> okay. okay, well, then no it would be invidious for me to even ask the question. <laughs> no, 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 no. But Olga's here. She's in Greece, but I think she maybe she's not been able to unmute herself. But she's there. She's saying hi to you. I'm sure. So, but where were we last time? We were at your we were just about getting into university, as I remember. Oh my goodness. Oh. Well, can we fast track forward? Do you think? No, no. It's not <laughs> going to happen. Oh yeah. Oh. Um, I mean. So now, yeah, yeah, please. No, um, uh, the baton is with you, sir. No, no, I just want to just tell people who maybe haven't seen it, but we've moved out of boarding school and now we're getting into university. And this change that happens in that situation, that also you'll have to tell us a little bit about. Um, Oh, we, we probably dealt with, I think I spent uh, a year between school and university, so we probably talked about that. Um, that was the time you were traveling? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, so we probably talked about that. And then, um, yes, university was, um, there was an initial adjustment to be made because um, I had not done my research very thoroughly and I applied to the particular university on the basis that I think at the time it was the only university in the country to offer a joint honours in law and philosophy. Okay. So I was very keen on the idea of studying as a joint honours law and philosophy and it was only when I got up to the university that I discovered that um, uh, uh, it had not been very well planned so that there were important uh, philosophy lectures which directly clashed with important law lectures. Mm -hmm. So effectively, I had to uh, make a decision between the two. And, you know, heart and head or whichever way you describe it, um, you know, out of pure interest, maybe philosophy, but um, uh, pragmatically, it had to be law. So I switched um, very soon after arriving at the university from um, law philosophy to law. But what, what, in terms of philosophy, what were the subjects? I mean, what all did you study in philosophy? Oh, it was, you know, a broad philosophy degree as an undergraduate student with uh, the main, uh, the great philosophers and their works. And I figured it would be really, really interesting. But um, as it didn't go ahead, I remain 
um, largely ignorant on. <laughs> I'm totally ignorant, so I, I said might as well hear from you some aspects of the philosophy part that you picked up. Anything that you want to tell us, what you really, I mean, something that you picked up. No, what I missed, I missed. Um, so um, there, there it was. Um, yes, but uh, for the rest, it was, you know, it was, it was a good place to do law, a highly thought of um, law department, um, small, very small. Uh, at my time, I think there were only about 50, if I remember rightly, uh, certainly less than 100. My recollection is something like 50 um, pure law students at the time. There were some law and French or law and something else joint honours degrees with a few people doing those but the pure law students I think we were only about uh, 50 or so. But what is the institution called? Uh, it's um, Nottingham University. Nottingham. Yeah. Not Nottingham. But, no. but in terms of number of law students graduating every year in that time how many were there? How many would graduate? Oh, totally, um, uh, yeah, totally around around the country. Yeah. Uh, oh, I don't know. I don't know how many around the country. Can't tell you. Um, lot of, is it lots or is it because the point yeah, is? Yeah. Yeah. yeah lots. Um, you know, there are, I don't know, probably then there would have been over 25,000 solicitors in the country and they will all, well, no, not all of them will necessarily be law graduates, um, mm -hmm. at that time, it was still possible to do law on a vocational basis, you know, to sign up as a five-year man with a law firm and, um, you know, for let's say poorer students who needed to work um, at the same time as study, that's what they would do. Um, and there were also, of course, um, people who converted from other degrees to to law um okay no, because yeah because from the numbers when i look at the churning process which is happening now i mean we're churning out lawyers by the hundreds of thousands mm. i think we, we we have about five hundred thousand law students in india right now as i understand but kathleen is here kathleen of course works with a lot of law students so she sees numbers there so i, I don't know whether how, what the scene in the uk is because is there was there some limit to the numbers which would actually graduate mm -hmm. and then practice no, I mean, my sense is that um, probably the US, and this is uh, sort of uh, a little more than an educated guess on my part, the US probably has the highest ratio of um, lawyers to general population. Oh, would you mind, uh, Vikram, would you bear with me one moment? Yeah, not at all, not at all. We have, yeah, we have Lisa here. We have to wish her a happy birthday also. Happy birthday, Lisa. Look at the timing. Jonathan had to go right now and here you come in. Please, you can unmute yourself. Why is he going so soon? Because he realized this is now Lisa's show. <laughs> no. <laughs> Kat no. Kato, you, can, you, can wish, you can wish Lisa. Kathleen, you can also please. Hey. Yay. Hi. Hi. Can we, we do we have to sing at this point or are we going to do it? Little no, later? please. <laughs> Hello, sorry, sorry about that interruption. But Jonathan, it is Lisa's birthday, so we're also oh, going, going to be celebrating it after your after your. But what, no, 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 we, I won't be able to stay that long because I have we have to run around and do lots of things. Lisa, mm. how can you say that? I put that whole thing out there. They sent out messages to everyone that is happening at 8.30 because I thought Jonathan will take about one and a half hours at least. But he's, of course, wanting to leave earlier. So you can't do that. You can do your work and come back maybe. Okay. Yep. Okay. So okay, now it's Jonathan's show. Sorry, I'll have to mute you. It is your birthday, <laughs> but you're oh. okay, staying muted. <laughs> well, happy birthday. Uh, my, my guess would be 21 and a little bit. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. On my birthday cake, it says zero seven. Somehow they got it backwards. <laughs> Maybe it's 007, zero, zero, seven. 
<laughs> oh, that might be it. <laughs> yeah, that's what they should have done. They should have put the, uh, another zero there. That would have looked nice. Another zero. That would have been cute. Zero, zero, seven. <laughs> but Jonathan, she is she is bond. If you hear a story, because she's been on the show, of course, she's had to be two parts. We'll have to watch because they're about, I think, together about seven hours, maybe. So, but she's had quite a story. Yeah. Yes, I've just been all over the place. <laughs> well, happy birthday. Thank you. Okay. Now let's hear from you. Yes. So you stay sticking around, and you like whoever you want to invite, please invite. And we're going to do it after Jonathan leaves. We'll all be celebrating your birthday, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, bye, bye. I mean, bye, Ines. You're there, but <laughs> mute it for the moment. <laughs> yeah, Jonathan, please. So, um, Vikram, where where were we? We were on the. My only thing was that at that point of time, how many lawyers came out? I mean, as a profession, yeah. I think I think the UK is not one of the um, most over lawyered jurisdictions. Mm -hmm. Um, probably, and I just have this as at the back of my mind as, uh, as my guess is, uh, the US would be one of the most over -lawyered. Uh China, for example, would be one of the most under -lawyered, um, although that may now be changing. And I would guess that India is also relatively under -lawyered. No. Or at least under -judged because yes. I know that cases can run on for you know it's nothing for a case to last 25 years exactly yeah. exactly so we, i assume that's because of either a shortage of lawyers or a shortage of judges or don't ever, yeah don't even think that we have shortage of lawyers we just it's all just we just a machine churning out lawyers and we have so many of them out there so that's why i was checking i thought because i'll tell you why i was asking because i think andrew was talking about andrew miller was here on one of his on one of the shows so he was talking about the fact that when he was thinking of doing law his mother said there were other people who did law. We were not in that category of people who did law. So mm -hmm. was it that kind of an exclusive profession at that point of time? Um, no. No, I don't think so. I think I told you why I decided to study law before, didn't I? Or maybe, Jonathan, you were living a privileged life, maybe. So for you, it was part of what you did. Maybe, maybe the people are not no, so I, privileged. I, I think I told you that... Um, my father was a, a, a refugee from uh, Germany yep. and um, had studied law at Berlin University, but uh, Mr. Hitler put paid to his um, ambition to practice as a lawyer. And then an uncle, my late mother's brother, who I'd never met, he died when he was very young, um, she came from quite a poor background. I mean, her father was a school teacher. And um, yes, the the son had studied law, uh, the route I just mentioned, the five-year route when you got assigned to a law firm and, you know, therefore got paid for doing work for that law firm and at the same time uh, studied whilst you were working. And his first salary, he, he was a communist, so he gave away to the poor people in, in the park near where he lived. Mm -hmm. So that's why I started law, because I thought third time lucky, someone in the family ought to, um, you know, actually um, do this, crack it. But I mean, there was this person that you said he was Lord something, Lord something, whatever, who, who had some influence in your life uh, it was duke something or lord something it was some person that you said had helped in some way ah uh, you're talking about lord north yeah he, we didn't have, i mean you didn't tell us too much about his influence in your life or whatever no that was simply on the boarding school that was was picked you know instead of going to one of the crusty old classic um boarding schools um it, it you know, there was a change of direction and um, the new uh, independent progressive public schools is what. Uh, but, okay. but so Lord, yes. Lord North had that much of, a, only that much of a role to play. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Not beyond that. Not beyond that. Not beyond that. And um, yeah. So Nottingham was a good, ta uh, good place to study. Um, 
it was nice to, uh, you know, they had, I still remember, I, I, there were just a few of us who were rewarded, I think, at the end of the second year with university exhibitions. I think there were five of us out of the 50 um, who were picked as the sort of top of the class. And um, the head of the law department, the senior professor, who was a really great guy, Professor Smith, he was a very great contract lawyer, had written the standard uh, textbook on contracts. He was also a great criminal lawyer, had written, um, ha had a fierce rivalry with one of the professors at Cambridge at the time. But anyway, Professor Smith, he said to me, I, I'm instructed to hand you a check. This is the reward for your, you know, getting an exhibition. But before handing it over to you, I have to ask you how you will spend the money. And I'm sure he expected me to say that it would be on, you know, his law book or other law books. So I turned to him and said that it would be mostly on wine, women and song. <laughs> and um, he, he said, well, I will pretend I didn't hear that. And here is the check. <laughs> good. He handed over the check. Still handed over the check. He still yes. handed over the check. So that was that was good. Yeah. Okay. So where did the money go? Uh, probably on wine, women, and song. Yeah. <laughs> good. So money well spent. <laughs> money well spent, and um, yes, it was it was a very good period. There was, um, uh, yeah, a sympathetic. Um, it was just, because it was a small department, you got a lot of personal attention from, uh, and I found that I enjoyed the subject, was quite good at it, um, to the point that uh, one of the professors recommended I then, um, I think he was in touch with the French government. He also taught in France. And he told me that there was a scholarship available from the French government to do postgraduate studies in law at the University of Aix-Marseille. And fortunately, so that's uh, a university in the south of France, in Provence, which um, is, is split across uh, two sites, one in Marseille and the other in uh, Aix-en-Provence. Fortunately, the law department was in Aix, which is a beautiful small town uh, in the south of France. And so I competed for one of those scholarships and then did postgraduate studies uh, there. Jonathan, I think we're going a, little, going a little too fast. While you're in Nottingham, what is the situation in the world, in the country? Are you involved in any of things happening outside? Or what yeah. the activities in the call institution? I mean, we have to create this. I find out what's happening there with you. No, not 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 much. I mean, I I um, look. I, I used to go away a lot, travel. I kept a car at the university. Um, you know, so it was. So which I, yeah? Which car was that? You have to also tell us that. What sort of car? Um, I mean, you have to tell us about those cars. I wish you had photographs of those. We'll have a whole car series with you. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think um, those who are not petrol heads would die of boredom. But it was, um, what did I have when I went to Nottingham? I think it was, um, yeah, because I got that when I was 21. Yeah, uh, something called a Triumph Dolomite, which was, um, you know, very nice car for a, a young student. So I was I was spoiled. And I felt forever guilty because um, I think it was my mother who had said, look, if you will give up smoking, I will see that you, you know, get this car when you're 21 years old. Um, and I uh, made a good deal because I agreed to give up smoking, but that didn't prevent me from taking up. I think I then took up a pipe, so <laughs> I was, you know, and I forever feel guilty that I effectively conned, you know, my okay, so, so she said, you, yeah, okay. So she said, give up smoking cigarettes and you said, okay, I'll do that. Okay. Exactly. And then you interpreted it in that way and then you, exactly. 
Okay, which so is, so which you, is, you know, a bit uh, of a okay, so sharp you, trick, isn't it? Yeah. Basically, you misused your whole legal education and everything that you learned in interpretation. You have used it on your mother, which is <laughs> not the best thing you did. <laughs> but you got your car at the end. Okay. At the end of the day, you have a car. Yeah. That's, I, That's all I that matters. Car and, um, yeah. So where are you going in that car? Where while in university? I mean, what, what, where are you traveling? Tell us about those places also. I mean, what is England oh, that, like that? that... Look, it, I mean, Nottingham's in the middle of a, a very nice part of the country with, um, you've probably heard of Robin Hood and Sherwood Forest, and mm -hmm. there's the Peak District, and further north, there's the Lake District. So lots of places to go to and... Um, spend time but how much has the countryside changed since that time to now i'm sure you travel now also uh, more uh, yeah of course more built up i mean there's been population growth i can't tell you what the percentage is since uh, you know in the 50 years or so since almost 50 years since i left university but uh, of course there will be have been huge population growth no but the character of the villages has it changed Yes, because, um, you know, for example, little corner shops um, aren't uh, able to generate the income to pay the rent that's demanded. So maybe in small villages, it's still OK. But certainly we've seen in big towns that, uh, you know, the little um, the corner butcher, baker, etc., have largely gone and um, you find in their place um, things like estate agents and, and supermarkets and so on. So yes, there have been those sorts of changes. Yeah, because I, I really thought that but at least at the village level, things might not have changed so much because I, the way you protect the in terms of construction and all those things, so yeah, I think you're right, actually, that the, the smaller villages, you would still find, uh, you know, are still largely picturesque uh, and have been able to resist the, the, you know, influx of estate agencies and boring places like that. So you still find the, a few of the corner shops. Because I really enjoy watching this series, the BBC series called Escape to the Country. Mm. Very nice. I mean, yeah, then, it is. It is. But um, they're probably stretching imagination in some respects. No, I mean, it's yeah, really, so I mean, you asked yeah. about other activities. So I joined the um, Drama Society. That's nice. And um, uh, some people would say it was aptly scripted, um, given the role of method. Uh, uh, Mephistopheles in uh, Dr. Faustus. So, uh, you know, the lines included, now Faustus let thine eyes with horror stare into the vast perpetual torture house. There are the furies tossing damned souls on burning forks and so on. So um, that was a play we uh, performed and I, I think actually that we were in, we got to the inter-university finals of the, let's say the, the drama competition uh, that particular year. Uh, and we didn't know, we were playing for, let's say performing for a week and we didn't know when the judges would, would come along. Uh, and then we were asked, we, the last performance was supposed to be, let's say, you know, 8 p.m. on a Saturday evening. And we were asked by popular demand to put on a second show on the Saturday. So from whenever, 11 p.m. till uh, the wee small hours of the next day. And um, between the two performances... Um, the stage hands um, had kept, you know, backstage um, uh, drums of beer, beer kegs, and 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 other things. And I think also that some of them were smoking uh, uh, weed. 
So um, I was given a fair supply of um, both weed and um, beer, uh, which had the very unfortunate consequence that um, I played my part in that final rendition late on the Saturday night as pure comedy, uh, thereby completely wrecking the performance. And it was that performance where the judges were in attendance. So it, I decided that had to be the end of my acting career. So I, I thought something, in, I thought I something interesting in is going to come. Friends. I thought something interesting is going to come up that you won that competition because of that particular. No, 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 no. Retired in disgrace from from acting. Yeah. So, so actual retirement from acting. You didn't. Uh, then further, you didn't ever get an opportunity to do any plays or anything. No. Later no. in life? No. No. Yeah. Um, but not um, an area you'll want to explore. Maybe you'll want to explore something now. No, I th I think not. I mean, um, you know, I don't know. You, I'm sure, Vikram, you could tempt me with the one or other role and I'd have to, you know, and if it was somewhere really nice like uh, Nainital or something in the north of India and you said come along and play for a week in I don't know the maybe one or then. other yeah maybe then but then it would be a combination of temptations the my acting being probably the least of the of those so, First, uh, yeah. we'll have to find a place where you would you would like to go to because Nainital has become overcrowded so Has that's it? not not a place you would want to go to now. So we'll have to identify something else for you. Okay. Right. But the play or no, no play, anyway, you should be traveling here at some point of time, definitely. I will look forward to it. Okay. But but otherwise, I was asking you in terms of the what maybe the political activities or generally the situation in the country that what what year is this? The university is happening in which year? It is um, 1970 through to. Uh, the end of was it 73 yeah so i would have started 70 yeah and finished in um, finished mid 73 so what is the in terms of the world situation or the situation outside what is it like i mean politically economically socially um you know these these were these were good days it was i think it was pre-decimalization so you know i think we still had pound shillings and pence mm -hmm. and um you know which all the rest of the world of course found extremely confusing um no it was it was it was a good time okay, okay. no such issues happening nothing everything was smooth <laughs> nothing that well, you remember I remember i mean yeah, I mean, there was, um, you tell me what was happening at the beginning of the 70s on the okay. world stage. Okay, okay, Kato will have a look at this. He'll tell us a little later, maybe. Okay, Kato, please tell us a little later what was happening at that time. Okay, so basically at this point in time, I mean, university is done and you're okay. You Now you've just graduated and now you're all ready to practice law. Uh, well, yes, but I... I um, was lucky to get, as I mentioned, one of these French government scholarships to go to the University of Aix-Marseille. And um, yes, that was a great experience because um, the practice at uh, the practice at the time was that I think in your second year you applied. I mean, I decided I wanted to do international commercial work and um, the practice was to apply to law firms um, in your second at the end of your second year at university mm -hmm. and again courtesy of the same professor who recommended the um, the French government scheme uh, he was friendly with one of the uh, partners in what was subsequently called the magic circle firms you know the biggest firms in the country very prestigious and so on so um i think courtesy of his recommendation because they were quite tough to get into 
uh, I was interviewed, um, was given the position as a what was then called an article clerk in the firm, and then went off to France, knowing that when I came back, if you like, my uh, traineeship was was secure. But, 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 okay, but I haven't asked you about France. You have to tell us Aix-en-Provence. What was the experience there? Have you picked up well, the language? Or... Um, my French was reasonably good uh, before I went. But um, yes, certainly whilst I was there, it became fluent. Um, I mean, it, it was an absolute joy. I, um, I had my car with me in France. Mm -hmm. And so um, the other scholarship holders were staying in a university hall of residence. I decided, well, I ended up with um, uh, living in a, a, a small chateau, mm -hmm. either a huge manor house or a little chateau, whichever way you looked at it. Probably, I don't know, about 10 kilometers outside Aix-en-Provence. Um, owned by what I can only describe as a nymphomaniac landlady who, um, you know, she owned the first three floors, let's say ground floor, first, second floor. Then there was a sort of attic floor, which you could access from the back by a separate uh, staircase. And there were uh, rooms that she let out there, um, mostly to university students. So I took um, one of the rooms which had, you know, it was a lovely room with, uh, I mean, very old fashioned, you know, but beautiful house, lovely position. And um, so I could get away at the, you know, from, from Aix-en-Provence to the manor house and, and relax. But, but except Provence is a very small, very small place. I mean, for a person who, who's from London goes to a place like that, what was it? What was it like? Um, fantastic. You could walk most places. They had uh, the main avenue there was called the Cour Mirabeau. On the Cour Mirabeau, there was uh, one of the nicest uh, cafes probably in the whole of France called the Les Deux Garçons, mm -hmm. uh, where you know I spent many an hour sitting out on the terrace there drinking everything from coffee to beer to pastis, perno, and so on, and meeting friends and talking. And yes, it was it was lovely. No, I, I, I went there a few years back. So it was, I mean, in terms of the small town, I think that part, the character is still there. Of course, a lot of cars, you have cars. I think they should, according to me, just stop cars in that area. But otherwise, I think they've maintained the character, which I think, which is yeah, quite a good I'm thing. Thrown, I've also been back there in, uh, let's say, more recent years within the last 10 years, and it's grown very considerably um, to the detriment of the place. But uh, at my time, it was small. You could walk yeah. everywhere, and it was very beautiful. The old, the old city, the old town, was it was just lovely. Yeah, it's nice. And, and the university itself was... Um, uh, yeah, the law department, I think departments in France used to have to sort of fight for their funds. And um, the, I think the head of the law department uh, was quite politically involved. Actually, yes, he then ended up as one of the advisors of, um, went to work, I think, for Giscard d'Estaing. But um it, it was very political compared with, you know, England, where, which wasn't, I, I mean, French universities at the time, very political. Um, the, yeah, the head of the law department, his name was Debash, and he was uh, detested by the left-wing students. And in fact, one night I remember I was working late, which in itself was quite unusual, I was in the law library and I saw flames outside the front of the building and the left, while the students had set fire to um, Debash's car, which was, uh, you know, uh, ablaze in the night sky. Um, 
at the University of Aix-en-Provence, there was um, a maritime law professor. And did I tell you the story or? No, no. No. Okay, so um, he was actually a leading, uh, as they call it in France, maritimiste, a leading maritime lawyer who was uh, very well regarded, written lots of stuff, and he was quite an inspirational teacher. So I decided I followed uh, uh, his Droit Maritime uh, course um, because we could largely, as postgraduate students, decide what, which courses we wanted to follow and what ultimately we chose to write our thesis on. So as one of um, my key subjects, I chose uh, uh, maritime law. And... Um, instantly fell in love with it. And so um, I, I remember I discussed with quite a few people, um, where can one actually practice maritime law? Because the Magic Circle firm that I'd agreed to, to, to join, uh, I knew did not practice maritime law. So I asked around and I was given a recommendation that uh, a firm called INCE, I-N-C-E, that was the place to go to, was the leading maritime law firm in the UK. And that meant probably in the world because UK was, um, or London was um, the leading jurisdiction for maritime law, um, where, where most, you know, something like something over 80% of maritime disputes worldwide are resolved in, in London, probably closer to 85%. So I, I discovered that uh, that was the position. And um, then I had the dilemma, you know, do I um, continue with uh, the position that I was lucky to be given or do I reapply and so I decided to reapply. And um, uh, during a, I, I flew back from uh, France to London for an interview with INTS. Mm -hmm. And um, they told me they were full up for the time I wanted to join. And I still remember I, I said to, it was like the Spanish Inquisition. I think half the partners in the office were in on the interview panel that, that was actually interviewing me. And I remember when the senior partner said that to me, I said, well, that's a bit of a shame because I flew back from France on the basis that it was for a real possibility and not for a dead end. And he said, well, look, wait a second. Let me, um, I'm going to ask one of the present article clerks to take you out for lunch and then I'll speak to you when you're back from lunch. So they took me along the corridor and the door opens and I saw a bald gentleman in his, what looked to me as a 20 something year old, at least 20 years older than me, so mid forties. And I said, what, this is an article clerk? You know, I was thinking, what on earth do they do to trainees in this firm that um, uh, they end up looking like that? So. Anyway, it turned out that the guy who was taking me out, who later became a, a bosom buddy, um, he was a former master mariner, a ship's captain, and he had decided after a career at sea to requalify to come ashore to please his wife and, and family. And he requalified when he was already, you know, quite mature probably early 40s, to requalify as a, a lawyer. And that's why he was at the advanced age of, you know, 45 or so, um, an article clerk. Anyway, he took me out, I will never forget, for the hottest Indian meal I'd ever had at that point, uh, which certainly reduced me to tears. What, and, was, it, um, was it your but, chicken tikka masala or what was it? Yeah, it was hot. It was hot. It was hot. I don't know, Vikram, if uh, now I love, uh, it's almost the hotter the better. But at that time, I certainly wasn't used to it and it reduced me to tears. But I 
stoically kept going with bucketfuls of water to um, douse the flames. And then when I got back, they um, they said to me, uh, the same senior partner who'd um, uh, said to me, look, um, we've decided to make an exception and you can come and join us when you're, um, you know, when you're back from France. So I said, look, that's, that's very nice, but I must tell you, um, before I can say yes, I have to get out of the um, existing contract that I've got. So please bear with me. And um, he, of course, looked a bit surprised having gone out of his way to uh, find me a place. But anyway, I, I then went back to France, wrote to the uh, first firm and asked whether they would release me from the contract. And I got the most extraordinary response from them. It was along the lines that never has anyone in our 300 year history who's been lucky enough to be given a position with us been stupid enough to walk out before even setting foot through the door for the start of the traineeship. So I replied in more detail saying that I'd set my heart on maritime law, that they didn't uh, do maritime law and therefore by all means uh, let them ascribe it to stupidity, but my request still stands, <laughs> will you release me? And they wrote back and said, um, uh, yes, they would. And um, so then I, I set out, well, thereafter on a career of, of maritime law. Actually, when I got back to um, the university in France, I, I, you know, Pierre Bonassis, the maritime professor, was not only an excellent professor, he also became... Uh, sort of a friend during this period, and he and I would chat quite a bit. And um, he he tried to persuade me that actually it would be a good idea to stay in France. And he was a good friend of the senior partner of the leading uh, Paris uh, cabinet of, of maritime lawyers. And he said to me, look, Jonathan, you sit here and he sat me down, you know, at his opposite him at his desk. And at the time, I don't know whether you remember these things, Vikram, you had old style telephone with, you couldn't have conference calls. There was no technology, I think, for conference calls, but there, you could have an extension earpiece. So I could hold the earpiece to my ear, but I couldn't speak. So he said, uh, Jonathan, here you take the extension earpiece, you listen, I speak to Jean, and I tell Jean, and he will follow my recommendation. So I listened in, and there is uh, Pierre talking with Jean and saying, look, I have this young British uh, guy who wants to do maritime law. Would you take him into your cabinet, uh, you know, on a permanent basis on my recommendation? And Jean replies, uh, bien sûr, of course, uh, of course, Pierre, if you recommend him, uh, I take him. So um, that was, you know, it was probably not much longer than that. And I must say, I was enjoying very much the period in France and I was seriously tempted to, to stay. And, um, you know, in which case, obviously I would have gone to Paris and, and pursued my, and, future um, in, in Paris, but ultimately decided, um, I think there was a time limit at that point to complete your professional exams. And um, I decided that I'd go back to England, do the professional exams. And then if I still felt like going to France, I, I would return. So, uh, Vikram, so, yeah, I, I know, I know, I know, I know. So I saw you look at the, the watch. So it, this is it. But am I? Is, is this who is going to listen to all this stuff? I mean, this must uh, enough to bore a donkey to to bore them. There enough people out there who would want to know more about you. They, every, I mean, they, they, look, they, there is that part of you that they see 
of course, professionally and obviously in webinars and other things. Mm -hmm. But there is that other person that they definitely want to know and the kind of the profession that being a mediator is. I think that is important. People should be able yeah. to get to know the person. And is this the sort of stuff that you want to hear or am yeah, I getting yeah. off piste? No, no. And there is more, of course. I mean, I would. So in part three, we, I mean, we would understand, first of all, why maritime law? What was it that attracted you to maritime law? Yeah. And then, of course, life in France and all that. We'll, we can have a discussion. I mean, you, now you have, to, you have to leave now or you have some time? Yes, I, I really have to, Vikram. I'm under, under the cosh, as they say. Um, so uh, thank you very much. I wish uh, Lisa again happy birthday. I, I wish I could raise a glass of champagne to Lisa direct, but um, um, and Vikram, thank you very much. Um, look forward to next part time. Three, part three, yeah. we'll fix up a part three in September. In September, I so, have the date in front of me. I can give you a date right now. Eleventh of September. We've got eleventh of September. September. Yeah. Gosh, you're unbelievably organized. Yep. Um, <laughs> 11 oh i'm going to a wedding that weekend 26th we had 26th then um 20 yeah 25th 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 is fine perfect so we've got 25th done about this time yeah i think this time is good or maybe a little later can we do it at 3 p.m your time okay no yeah. in it's, when do you when do you change to gmt uh, I forget. It'll, um, phew, gosh, it's round. I forget exactly. Okay. No, 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 not in September yeah. for sure. Not in September for sure. It must be October, November or something. Yeah, I, th I think, I think you're right. I think it's a bit later. Perfect. So we'll, we'll keep it at 7.30 PM India time. So that'll be in summertime. It'll be 3 PM. Okay. 3 PM. Yeah. 3 PM. Uh, thank you very much. And I look forward to hearing uh, from Pato San uh, what was going on on the world stage in the late 60s, early 70s. Um, maybe uh, we'll hear that in September. September Although, okay. If there was anything earth shattering, perhaps we can hear before. But I, I can't remember. I was tucked away in cozy Nottingham. And, yeah. Anything, Kato? Anything? Major? Well, not particularly major, but I, I was thinking uh, when you were uh, stu studying at, in Notting Nottingham, wasn't that at the time of the Labour government? Um, yeah, I think so. I've got in mind, you know, the, and then we had the miners, uh, sorry, the Conservatives back in, and then there was the five day week. And wasn't that Ted Heath? I mean, I'm terrible with dates. I, I can't remember what I had for breakfast yesterday, let alone what was happening in the 70s. <laughs> the main uh, thing I, it was a stable, I, it was a stable period. It was a stable period. There was nothing major that was happening. That's what you're saying. But nothing that if you don't remember, well, that means yeah. Well, there were probably all sorts of important things. That probably the Vietnam War was in full swing. Um, I think the uh, Shah in Iran was about to get kicked out, uh, you know, and the Ayatollahs were about to move in. Um, yeah, I mean, certainly there was important stuff happening, but it nothing was not... that, so nothing that you were was something that you would get involved in or something like that. No, not one of those things. Was I on the barricade? Shouting? Yes, yes. No. Was it? Okay, that's, no. <laughs> that's all you want to know. That's about it. Okay. <laughs> Good. Very nice to see you, and um, I wish you a happy birthday party. But Jonathan, anyway, we're going to be seeing you at the symposium. When, yes. when are you? When are you on the symposium? What date are you coming in? I'll have I to think stay. you mentioned the ninth. Okay, perfect. So we'll see yeah. you on the ninth. But but please try and come in for the other sessions. Yeah, and sure. anyway, we have to organize some mediation matters. Definitely, definitely. The baby, I'm working on that. I'm Excellent. totally working on that. It's Lovely so to see you, and I wish you well. Thank you very much Thanks. for coming in and we'll see you then. Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.